So as I mentioned earlier, um, we are building on the old particle model that you would have done in junior high science, um, where everything's made out of particles and, they, and you have the solid liquid gas forms that you should be familiar with. Um, we're now going to build it up with the kinetic molecular theory of gases. And it basically says that, you know, all matter is made up of particles and those particles are continuously moving. They're always in motion, even when they are in solid form. So uh, solids have very little movement. They still vibrate in place, but they have little movement, which holds them and fixes them in place, gives them that solid shape. Liquids have a little bit more, um, you know, freedom of movement, so they can kind of slide over neighboring, you know, uh, particles. Um, small gaps, but not very many. And you know, gases, they have so much kinetic energy, they're free to move in all directions and bounces, bounce on the edges of the container. Um, the kinetic molecular theory of gases, um, it's, it's kind of like an idea that they had to describe an ideal gas. Now, I, in reality, gases are not always ideal. And what do you mean by ideal? Well, it behaves in a very um, simplistic way, mathematically. If I change the pressure, then it'll do this. If I, if I change the temperature, it'll do that. Very predictable. But all gases are different. And because they're different, they are going to interact each, with itself and others uh, with chemistry. So they might react or they might uh, you know, come together. Uh, so the ideal gas is assuming that none of that funny business happens. And to a, a large degree, um, the ideal gas behavior actually works for a lot of gases, provided that you have it at a standard uh, pressure, so like roughly one atmosphere, which is what we have around us, and that you don't have the temperature so low that it actually liquefies. So as long as you're you know, well above the temperature that the gas forms a liquid, you should be okay. First point of the kinetic molecular theory of gas, um, gases are made up of particles moving very quickly, constantly, and at random. So they're all going to bounce around randomly. You know this. Second, the higher the temperature, the faster the particles move as they have increased kinetic energy. So more temperature. Temperature gives, temperature is essentially um, kinetic energy. Um, when you heat something up, um, especially a solid, so say if you've got a block of ice, the, uh, the molecules of water are held together quite tightly by hydrogen bonds, but they're still vibrating in place. If you give enough kinetic um, energy, so heating it up, you give it more kinetic energy, they can eventually separate. The bonds are not quite as strong. They still slide over each other because there's still some hydrogen bonding attraction between them, but not enough to hold them in place. If you give it more kinetic energy, they can finally separate and form that gas form. Third point, the forces of attraction and repulsion between gas particles are practically zero. Now, this is what I was telling you about um, the chemistry when you have the, the gas particles actually interacting with each other. We're assuming that in an ideal gas, that doesn't happen. So when they come together, they aren't repelled necessarily, unless they collide and they bounce. Um, and they aren't attracted, so they won't fuse in any way like, like dispersion forces. That's what I was trying to think of. Fourth point, uh, the gas particles are very far apart. Lots of volume of space, empty space in between each of them. This is the fifth point now. Gas particles collide with each other and of the walls of their container exerting a pressure. Collisions are perfectly elastic. Perfectly elastic. So I've got this elastic bouncing ball. Now, uh, one of my friends told me of this uh, lecture, which unfortunately I did not have the pleasure of being taught by at UQ, but he ran into a wall repeatedly during the lecture and he bounced off the surface of the wall just to illustrate that when things collide, they kind of come at an angle and they, uh, they leave at a similar angle toward the wall. Um, showing that, but he was not elastic, meaning that when he ran into the wall, he had a certain velocity or speed, uh, but when he bounced off, he uh, did not return away from the wall with the same velocity. Um, in an ideal gas, we assume that they come at the same speed and leave at the same speed. They don't lose their kinetic energy on, on collision. Um, and we can see this with certain objects. So this elastic bouncing ball uh, will kind of return to a similar height. It's not going to be perfect, but a similar height to where I dropped it from, so about there. Uh, if I've got something that's not elastic, say, uh, all right, I'll just use the lens cap. Uh, this is made of plastic. It's not very elastic. So when, it, when I drop it from this height, it's probably going to bounce, you know, yay high. Ideal gas, 
the collisions are elastic, meaning that uh, no energy is lost when they collide, which means that you know, they're not going to lose their um, velocity as they go around and collide with surfaces of the, con of the container and each other. I think that's all I have time for before everyone gets off of their uh, you know, lessons for lunchtime.